Carpe diem. What does that mean? Well, if any are familiar with the phrase or know Latin, it means to seize the day. The meaning behind the sentiment is to have a greater appreciation for life in the present, giving minimal thought to what has happened or what may be coming next. In our digital world, where everyone's achievements are pinned onto their social media feeds, and failures circulate like gossip from phone to phone, it's pretty hard to live in the moment. You may feel similarly. I am constantly stressed. Naturally, I overthink my past and carefully plan my next steps. This, in reality, is not a healthy way to live. Definitely not how to seize the day. But the philosophy of carpe diem is guiding me towards seizing my day. And I'm here to introduce to you guys how you can too. This phrase, carpe diem, is what screams in my face in the morning while I blink the sleep outside of my eyes, outside the little jujitsu dojo in Mita, where I spend most of my mornings before lugging myself off to school. Although this may seem like a pain, for me, it's always my favorite part of the day. All right, well, what is jujitsu? Derived from the Japanese words ju and jutsu, it directly translates to the gentle art. Why I decided to call it that, I have no idea. It's a martial art based on ground fighting and submission holds. You utilize a number of techniques to force your opponent into submission, either through choke holds or joint locks, or, as my sister loves to say, aggressive hugging. The past five years or so, the art has boomed in popularity thanks to the rise of mixed martial arts. I started during probably the wackiest summer we'll ever have, the summer of 2020. Pre-vaccine life was different. No one was asking if you were a Pfizer or a Moderna, and the most common phrases were, "What should I watch next? Am I on mute?" And my personal favorite, "Should we just watch Tiger King?" The new normal became well, trust normal, and life was that. That summer, my family and friends took a domestic beach trip to a fan favorite for this audience, Shimoda. One of the dads on this trip ditched the usual dad jokes and instead shared with us his love and passion for jujitsu. Me, growing up playing but nothing but ball sports, my knowledge of martial arts was limited to Kung Fu Panda and the Karate Kid. I mean. The first time I searched up jujitsu, this is a picture that I found on the internet. Naturally, we are creatures who thrive on routine. Planning things out, or even having a general idea of where we want to go, provides us with stability and confidence. COVID took all of that away, and it drove us crazy, not knowing what the future entailed, and dismayingly watched the cases rise day after day after day. Was life. My escape from this was jujitsu. I needed a routine that could help keep me sane. But oddly enough, jujitsu didn't only help with this; it was full of surprises. It gave me the freedom to let go a bit, let loose. And for me, this was something my life desperately needed at the time: mental freedom. It taught me the phrase and philosophy I remind myself of every time I get too wrapped up in the future or think of past regrets. It teaches me to seize the day, the moment, giving minimal thought to whatever may be coming next. All right, well, you guys may be asking, why am I even here, listening to this guy? Well, through jujitsu, I learned three central values that help me seize the day. So, in hopes that whenever you find yourself trying to guess future situations or fretting about the past, you can recall that one TED talk that kid did on precisely that subject. We've all experienced a state of flow. It's a state of mind where it's total focus, no other thoughts but just you and the task at hand. To me, this is what jujitsu and carpe diem is all about: being 100% conscious of what you're doing, when you're doing it, with your mind dead set on the now, the present. A popular saying in jujitsu is to flow with the go. I know, it sounds corny and grammatically incorrect. But in essence, what it means is that instead of just going with the flow and letting external circumstances sway you from one side to another, you flow with your go, with what you can control, when you can control it. 
It's not caring about the things you can't affect, but focusing on the things that you can change. This applies in life as well. Know what to spend your energy on, and then flow with that go. Not only will you get more done in the long run, but you have a greater appreciation and enjoyment for the task at hand now, without getting too overwhelmed with the long-term goal. If you can maximize that time that you spend in a state of flow, you can truly embody carpe diem, regardless of what you're doing. A lesson in humility is one often learned, not taught. Being a fairly active teenager, I assumed jujitsu wouldn't be too bad, right? Wrong. Absolutely, positively wrong. I still remember my first day. I got completely picked apart. No matter how much force I applied, how aggressive I was, whether I did this and that, or this and that, all that force would just be used against me and back to square when I would go. It was humiliating, but a valuable lesson. This, in time, is what I realized jujitsu is all about. It's an art of failure. It's the first time failure felt good in my life. What I had to hone in on was not how many times I could do something right, but how many times I wouldn't do it wrong. This forces you to have a short memory. You focus on each technique and each movement at a time, and you win those small battles enough times that when you eventually take a step back, you see that you didn't do all too bad. What everyone told me before I started jujitsu was that my ego, if too big, was going to take a beating. And after that experience, I can assure you that my pride hurt a lot more than my body. You see, in a sport where strength and athleticism come second to technique, it's the ones who can accept failure without hard feelings, rather use that as a means to improve, are the ones who eventually do. It can be anything. But having a constant reminder of humility can not only be a learning experience, but a valuable one too. Quieting your ego allows you to see the world through a different lens, one that is attained by your beliefs or centered around yourself. You see things for what they are, and each moment is appreciated for what it is. And that clarity, seeing things for what they are, is essential to taking advantage of it. This is Diego, an instructor at the dojo. Originally from the Aichi Prefecture, he moved to Tokyo to teach jujitsu. He's crazy talented and could theoretically beat almost anyone in his way. But this isn't what I admire the most about him. It's the fact that he would never tell you that. He's always got a smile on his face, whether it be at 6 a.m. or right before closing time. Not afraid to point out a mistake you're making or a technique you screwed up, he's also extremely attentive and cares a lot about your development. A huge part of jujitsu is the post-training conversations that everyone has, ranging from asking someone what move they just submitted you with to talking about school, work, or anything in between. I first talked to Diego during one of these conversations, and it's a conversation I don't think I'll ever forget. It started off with some small talk, but after talking to Diego for a while. And getting to know him, he told me that he didn't even go to high school. Due to frequent fights, poor attendance, and bad grades, he just wasn't able to take that next step. This was shocking to me. I mean, being in an environment where all of us go through all 12 years of school and then university, I never thought that I would meet someone who's never done this. And better yet, look up to them. Diego is someone who truly embodies carpe diem. He doesn't let past circumstances define who he is or how he treats others. He takes every day, every hour, and every class as it is, with a smile on his face and passionately teaches his students. And for that, he's a huge role model to me. It can be anyone, but having someone who's worth emulating can allow you to embody the values that you strive for. The saying goes that life imitates art, or art imitates life. But in my case, it's been the martial arts. Grappling, seizing, submitting imitates life. Grapple with the worries of today, struggle with today, and take it down. 
through flowing with the go, humility, and embodying your values, submit the day. Seize the day. Thank you.